All right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Open Text Live webinar series. My name is Gretchen Wurgis, and I work with the Open Text Global Partner Program. As this version of our Open Text Live webinar series uh, is presented by our valuable Solutions Extensions partners, uh, and today we'll be hearing from the wonderful answer modules. And before I hand it over to them, I would just like to remind you that we do record every webinar in this series and you'll be able to access that recording at opentext.com slash events and webinars. It's typically posted within about 24 hours, but you'll also receive an email if you registered for this event with a link to that recording as well. If you ever have any questions uh, about, about this webinar, about our webinar series, if you have a suggestion for a topic or a product that, or solution that you'd like to see covered in a future Open Text Live webinar, please do not hesitate to reach out to me at partners at opentext.com and I'd be glad to hear from you and take those suggestions and questions. All right, and uh, one last bit of business before we start is that if you do have a question, you can access the, uh, the Q&A panel at the top right hand corner of your screen. There's a little chat bubble that has a question mark on it. You can put your questions in there and some we may be, answer, be able to, excuse me, able to answer during the presentation. And if we can't, we will uh, address those after the presentation. And any we can't get to today, um, we of course will follow up with those individuals. Um, so please, if you have registered or, or entered the webinar as an anonymous user, if you could also uh, include your email address, um, we will be sure to get back to you with those questions. And uh, and I think that's all we need to address. And without further ado, I'd like to hand it over to the CEO of Andrew of Answer Modules, Patrick Fatali. Go ahead, Patrick. Thank you so much, Gretchen. So before to to start, uh, let me just put this slide a few seconds on the screen. Um, big disclaimer uh, for uh, for this webinar, and we can jump start on the main topic for today. So today, a very exciting day because I'm going to show you an example of how our solution, our flagship module uh, module suite, can be applied to a real business case and to implement an application on top of Content Suite or extended DCM uh, that can be utilized to um, create automation around very important uh, functionality such as connected workspaces and now this uh, application can really save you hours of work and can really improve the way you are working with uh, that exceptional feature. So just a few words about Answer Modus. We are a product oriented company. We work all around the world with uh, um, any kind uh, of, of company. The, our solution is very cross industry. I've been awarded a couple of times in the last two years by Open Text. Uh, so check it out on our website to uh, to know more. As said, the solution itself it's very cross industry, so it can be utilized. Doesn't really matter which kind of company you are working with, uh, which kind of industry you're in. Uh, if you are, uh, or if you are utilizing Content Suite or Extended ECM, definitely uh, this solution is for you and can save you hours of of work and really improve the way your users are working with uh, the platform itself. Uh, going back to today's topic, um, so connected workspaces, they were introduced recently. Uh, they are a fantastic tool. Um, on top of this feature, you can build amazing solution on, on content server. Uh, they are utilized as the foundation for extended SEM. Doesn't really matter which extended SEM flavor you like the most. Uh, what they are, a, they are a collaborative space that keeps together uh, the users, uh, the team members, uh, the content and the processes that you define around a, an entity. They are created uh, from a template and this is uh, great because you can define uh, which kind of structure they should have, which kind of role they should have, and then through the system you can create thousands of them. Um, you might find yourselves in troubles when you realize that you have created thousands of them and you are in the need of um, change something in the template to reflect um, some new business need, some uh, new opportunity or some new uh, requirement you did have to fulfill. And so creating them is super simple and very effective. Uh, applying changes to them uh, is a bit more complicated, 
uh, what we discovered thanks to uh, one of our customers that uh, model suite can be easily utilized to create a tool that uh, fulfill this kind of requirement and simplify uh, thanks to the fact that model suite can brings a lot of automation into the platform um, everything that is related to how these changes are actually applied to um, to the system mm -hmm. Uh, to demonstrate that, let me jump into a live demonstration on how the tool can actually be utilized. So what I have here is a, a content server instance where I have uh, several different applications. Every application is running model suite and most of them are working with connected work spaces. So the application we're working today is a case management solution uh, for HR onboarding processes. You might have seen it in previous webinars uh, that were related to um, case management on top of extended BCM. So what I can do from this application is obviously I'm, I'm working with plenty of these um, different uh, workspaces. Each one of them is representing a, an employee. So if I enter one of these workspaces, I will see that um, as I expected, the workspace presents me with information about the uh, the employee is a uh, related um, business workspace, uh, so the, the manager that is, is managing him, um, the team members that is uh, working on uh, this uh, HR case, and obviously all the uh, folders and documents that are stored as part of the, uh, of the, um, of the case. So what I need to do is, um, since we need a, we might need a uh, to add a couple of folders, and we might need uh, to add a new role uh, because, for example, um, the the world is hit by a tremendous pandemic, and we need to collect additional information from our employees in order to certify that they uh, are aware of the risks related with the pandemic, et cetera, et cetera. So as a business user, what I aim to do is basically to uh, what I need to do is to define a new role and I will define I will need a, a couple of additional folders uh, to be created into this uh, into this workspace. And to do that, uh, what I should do is just to go into the um, uh, document server, uh, the content server document template. Uh, identify the um, the connected or space template that we have utilized uh, to manage um, that uh, that connected or space. Go into the uh, the roles and add a new role. So this will be my secure security officer. And once I've added this uh, new role, I can assign base permission to him uh, for uh, for this item. And then I can um, create the additional folder that I needed to track the uh, the COVID forms that I need the employees to uh, to fill in. And once I've created it, what I will do is change the permission so that the security officer has all the rights while its manager obviously is not going to see anything here. So I will remove basically this one and I will remove permissions for HR manager and I will remove permission for uh, the HR uh, consultant as well. So now my job is done. Um, whenever a, a new employee uh, will be on board on our company. Uh, the uh, connected or spaces related to this uh, business case will be uh, properly configured and everything will work fine and smoothly. So the, the new role will be defined and the, um, the new uh, folder will be created. But what about the connected or spaces that uh, we have already created? So uh, to solve this problem, I will ask basically my content server system administrators to work uh, to the uh, connected workspaces updater to apply the changes to existing workspace. And to do that, I leave the, uh, the floor to my colleague Fabio, who is going to showcase you how to do that. Yep, 
thank you, Patrick. So you should be seeing my screen at this point, and I will impersonate the um, I will impersonate the system administrator in this case, and I will show you how we can apply the changes that we've seen to the um, to this case. So to do that, I will access our workspace updater application. So once again, this is an application that has been built uh, entirely with uh, plain um, content suite features and our, our modal suite. And what I have, what I can do here is I can, I can configure new update jobs to be executed against um, content within the system. So uh, before starting that, I will just show you what the process will look like. So what we will do is we will define an update operation. Uh, in order to define the update operation, we'll define the blueprint of the operation. So what we want to change inside the workspaces. Uh, we will define the scope of the update. So uh, which which workspaces in the system want to update. We it's not not every time you want to update. You know all the workspaces of a given type in the system. Um, we will define some you know, details of how we want the update to be performed, and then we'll simply run the the job and let the system uh, take it from there. Okay. So in order to do that, what we'll do is we'll start configuring a new job. We can do it directly from here and we'll have the configuration form. So we're working with uh, employee onboarding. So I'll just add a note here. Uh, let's say we're interested in updating the role at first. So just give it a name so we'll be able to identify it in the future. We'll select the template that we're interested in updating. This is important because the system will um, have constraints on the changes made to the existing workspaces based on the status of the template workspace. OK, so we will apply changes that are consistent with the current template. At this point, uh, we are interested in defining what operation we want to perform. So at this moment, we support different types of operations. What we want to do right now is this role update operation. So what we are, we can add, delete or rename existing roles. In this case, we will add uh, a new role that has been created and given that we're, we know what context we're working in the system will automatically tell us that hey there's a security officer role within this template that we can use um, now we have the operation we have to define where to run it so here we have different options so it could be you know the result of a, of a search of a query uh, to, to keep it simple Today we're going to update all the uh, workspaces that are inside a specific container. So we'll go and find the container for the employees, which is this 2021 folder. I'll select that. We will run uh, perhaps a dry run first before actually executing the operation to see if everything is right. We can check the configuration or just for the sake of brevity, I'll just start it straight away. At this point, the system has triggered the execution of the job, so everything is passed over to the background agents that will run the operation. So um, I don't have to stay online and watch the operation. Uh, today we're working with a small bulk, with a small chunk of workspaces, but this could be uh, an operation, you know, working across thousands of, of workspaces. So the agents will pick up the job at some point and well, it's already, well, this was a dry run, so it's already done. And um, every for every run, the, the tool automatically generates an execution report. So I will be able to go in here, uh, grab the report based on the different operations. I will have separate sections in here and for each uh, workspace that has been found in the container that I uh, identified. I will have a report related to what kind of action we try to perform. The result, if the uh, expected result, remember this is a dry run, if the expected result is a success or whatever problem with the, with the operation that we could identify at this stage. So there were no uh, issues there. So what we can do is I can just grab the very same operation here and 
actually run it. So this won't be a dry run any longer. It will be an actual uh, execution. And once again, this will be running in the background. And at this time, the system will actually be um, adding the role information to the um, uh, to the workspaces. OK. So it's already finalizing, so it should be done in a moment. And the finalizing phase basically happens after all the um, all the workspaces have been processed and uh, uh, post execution checks and reports are being are being um, are being created. So um, I'll check the the result again. Now this is a productive execution, so the changes has actually been done, and I have the result. So a success means that this role I can expect to be uh, I can expect it to be actually existing now in these workspaces. Uh, well, we let's say we simplified it. We were only working on the role at this point. So if I want to also run the uh, folder um, synchronization, what I could do is starting from the same operation. Um, well, actually, I had to clone it, so I will create a new instance of this operation that uses the same configuration. Uh, let's call this folder update. So we remember that it's a different operation, still working on the employee onboarding, but I will work with an update of the content. And in this case, I will choose to create an existing folder from the template. And in here, I should find my new for loop folder that has been created. Uh, synchronization of permissions, since this is a new folder, will automatically be performed. So I would expect once I run this execution, everything else is already OK. I'll just start it. Once I run this execution, I would expect the folders to be actually created within the workspace and the correct permissions inherited from the, the template to be applied on every folder, obviously based on the, the, um, the local roles within the, within the workspace instance. Let's see if this is moving. Okay, should be done in a moment. And let me just check if everything is worked out correctly. COVID forms created success. Wonderful. So at this point, I should be able to check if everything worked. So I'll just go back to our uh, application. I'll grab any workspace in here. And we'll see that there's the new role that has been added to the uh, to the team. So um, the different roles, there's the new security officer role. And if I go inside my workspace, I should have my new folder. And let's also double check the permissions. So the permissions are nobody have, has access except my security officer as we configured. OK. Uh, obviously, well, there's other sort of operations that you can probably imagine um, to wanting to do on the workspaces. One could be, well, it's uh, pretty straightforward from this case. So we added a role, but we haven't yet defined what users are associated to this role. And with the with the updater tool, you could do that massively on all the workspaces. And the options that you have, and this is not only for the roles, but for all the operations, you can define custom rules to um, determine what values to apply in your update. So in this case, the security officer could be one single user for uh, all of my workspaces, or perhaps I could want to have um, a rule based on, I don't know, the department or some metadata associated to workspace uh, to have different people uh, applied associated to this role. Okay. Um, let me go back to the slides. Um, so, as I mentioned, the whole application is built with with Model Suite. Model Suite is 
um, as Patrick introduced at the beginning, our flagship solution. It is a collection of uh, models for Content Suite Extended ECM that will essentially um, work as a solution enabler, as an accelerator to develop uh, tools and applications, complete processes on top of, of Content Suite. So the, the, the obviously of implementing processes like the case of the case management application that Patrick was showing or also creating administration tools or um, well it's not something that has to have an interface either it could be just background maintenance tools everything that has to do with um, extending the capabilities of your content server can be done using using model suite and Specifically, in this application, you have seen um, you have seen custom dashboards. So uh, these type of custom interfaces can be created with our solution called Smart Pages, which is part of Model Suite, and you can use it to create your own custom dashboards using um, predefined widgets that can be used to compose your your interfaces, and still using uh, totally customizable business logic to you know produce the the data that you want to show in your dashboard um, you have seen configuration forms which were built using our beautiful web form solution so all the uh, data collection um, needs that you could have in your processes or in your tools you can use beautiful web forms to create these tailored um, form views uh, using once again predefined libraries of uh, form widgets to um, to do the job. So to simplify the job for you and a visual uh, editor to compose the interfaces. And last but not least, all of the automation part that we have seen. So the actual execution, applying the, um, the changes to the workspaces, all of that kind of work can be done using content script, which is our um, scripting solution for Content Suite. That's a very uh, uh, a multi-purpose tool that you can use in a ton of different scenarios and can really help, you know, uh, implementing logic inside your your applications. Um, back to the application. So at this stage, uh, what you've seen is the first version of the connected workspace updater application. And currently, what you can do is you can uh, work with the roles within a connected workspace. So you can uh, create, remove, or update the existing roles. You can work with basic content inside the workspace. So you've seen um, folder manipulation. Uh, you can work with the assigning or removing members inside the roles and synchronizing um, permissions on the workspace and its content uh, with the, the template. OK, uh, and as I was saying, it's it's possible to customize the rules that apply that uh, change those changes. So you can you can create your own um, your own rules based on your specific scenario that will automatically be applied to all connected workspaces. Um, I would like to also spend a word on how this application. So this application could potentially manage, uh, as I mentioned, thousands of um, updates. And this is something that if done without proper, let's say, uh, planning can create problems in uh, a productive environment. OK, it could consume the system resources and um, create issues to the users that are trying to use the system. So the default behavior of the tool is to run using the distributed agent framework available in Content Server by um, splitting the workload in smaller chunks that are executed whenever uh, a worker is available to do the job. So this allows you to um, control the workload to control the way these, you know, these changes are applied, and to um, potentially, since the, the the workers are, you know, um, configurable, 
you could decide where, what servers in your infrastructure to load and where to run the actual updates and uh, causing the less possible you know, stress on your, on your architecture. And this is, we have used it in this scenario because it made a lot of sense, but actually this feature, so the possibility of um, using the distributed engine framework through, um, through scripting is something that is available out of the box with our content script model. So you could use it in a ton of different um, situations that involve bulk uh, updating and not just, you know, it's not something that is specific to the um, uh, connected workspace updater uh, app. Um, so, um, this was just, as I mentioned, a couple examples of how you can use a uh, modal suite in the context to, to, to extend the capabilities of your, of your content suite. There is a lot of different scenarios a lot across a ton of different industries where uh, we can definitely uh, bring value, okay? Um, and this is... Once again, the, the, the technology is built to streamline the, um, the creation, the configuration of these applications. So we have seen over time, we had feedback of uh, the, time, the time cost. So the cost associated to implementing applications reduced up to 80% compared to using traditional tools. And this is mostly due to the, um, the tools that are available within the platform. So the possibility to create forms using visual builders, the possibility to create interfaces using the visual builders, the availability of libraries of uh, predefined code snippet, example libraries that can help you um, build your application based uh, starting with something that is, is, already, uh, is already there. So, um, thank you very much. Once again, um, I think we're ready to take any questions unless Patrick has something else to, to add at this point. No, I think that we can go straight to the, to the questions. All right, we do have a question. Again, you can use the Q&A panel by clicking on the icon that has the question mark on it. Uh, let's see, they say we use extended ECM for SAP and have thousands of folders, one for each capital component. Each folder has a standard uh, structure with common documents. When we upgrade to 20.3, we want to migrate or convert these folders to connected workspaces and connect them to the related object in SAP. Can this tool help? Patrick, do you want do you want to take that? So I'll, I'll start answering the question in the meantime. Uh, so yeah, definitely, uh, as I mentioned, content script is can be very useful to uh, automate this um, this kind of of operations. Uh, we had experience in the past of migrating um, older template workspaces to connected workspaces, so creating connected workspaces based on pre-existing data structures. There is uh, a ton of uh, APIs available inside Content Script to help automate that kind of operation, okay? Um, the, there's also, well, basically Content Script can be used to, um, to implement um, most of the operations that can be normally done inside inside content server either by our own uh, dedicated apis or by leveraging let's say general purpose apis that are uh, available within within content suite so uh, i would say uh, yes it is definitely something that that we could that we could help with all right very good all right, let's see here if we've got any other questions. We'll wait a moment here. And uh, just to remind you that we will be sending out an email to everyone who registered with a link to the recording. And you can always contact us at partners at opentext.com. And we'd be glad to get your questions answered 
And please check out uh, opentext.com slash events where you'll be able to see all of our upcoming webinars, but there's also a section there uh, labeled recording uh, where you'll be able to access this as well. All right, I'm not seeing any other questions. Did you want to say anything to wrap up, Patrick or Fabio? Uh, yes, again, so the um, as we demonstrated, so this, this solution is just an example of the kind of application you can build on top of model suite. Uh, it is now part of model suite, so any model suite customer uh, is entitled to um, this uh, current version of the connected or space updater and future releases. And uh, what we weren't able to show you because um, the time didn't permit it, but uh, the, the solution itself is uh, quite flexible as uh, Fabian demonstrated it is now covering a set of predefined action okay, that can be extended with custom scripts. So just the uh, the tool itself is way more powerful than we were able to demonstrate. Uh, the same technology, so the fact that we can utilize the distributed agent, the automation and the other elements are uh, of paramount importance whenever it comes to develop a robust and reliable, uh, reliable, reliable solution on, on Content Suite. Combined with existing feature, um, you can really create your next uh, enterprise application to be utilized all across your, your organization. Uh, with that, again, I thank you for the for the time you spent with us. I hope I think, you were able to. Yep. I think there's a couple more questions. Yeah, Patrick. they just came in. Mm. OK. Uh, the first question was, can this tool automatically relate workspaces? Yes, it can be utilized to create relationship among different workspaces. Again, uh, having the, the scripting solution allows us to define even the most complex logic to identify how this relationship should be created. OK, and the second question is, do you offer any performance related tools for optimization or identifying performance problems on Content Suite? So we have nothing specific to identify performances problem, uh, but um, yet again, the idea of having this kind of tools when it comes to uh, perform bulk operations, being able to define, uh, for example, forever distributed agent and um, being able to uh, utilize the so-called MapReduce framework that the distributed agent is basically implementing to implement bulk operation on the server can really reduce, uh, let me say, the stress uh, that is typically applied by this kind of operation on your systems and um, enabling um, uh, you to define this bulk operation without too much fear of impacting negatively the performances of their system. OK, and I have another question. We use extended ECM uh, for Outlook 365 and business user business users want to create business workspaces that are exposed through teams. Doing so requires permissions. Can this tool be made available to business users users who don't have permission like a wizard? Uh, yes, this is a typical situation in which you want to create automation and you want to create, let me say, a, a dedicated interfaces that allows to uh, either reduce the number of interaction required to perform an action to complete an action, or as in these cases, temporary, let me say, and uh, through a dedicated interface, enhance the, the rights of standard users. So this is definitely the kind of uh, use cases not these tools specifically, but more generally speaking, model suite can help you satisfy. All right, great. All right, I think that's all the questions. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for answering those, Fabio. And uh, Patrick, did you want to say anything to conclude? Again, thank you very much for, for your time. As said, um, we are uh, absolutely available for further discussion related either with uh, to the connected space updater or more speaking or more generally speaking, uh, different use cases model suite um, can be applied to. Uh, I also invite you everybody um, to consider that we are a very open to challenges. So if you have a, a business case you weren't able to solve or 
uh, you think that is um, not feasible on uh, on the solution or it is expensive, try to challenge us because we might have the right answer. All right, very good. Thank you so much to Patrick and to Fabio from Answer Modules. Uh, we appreciate your presentation today and, and the attendance of all of our, our uh, folks out there listening. So thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day and we'll see you soon. Thank you, Gretchen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.